everybody and welcome to my let's play welcome back i should say to my let's play of dino crisis so right where we left off i'm doing this puzzle here it's actually well i don't know if it's terribly obvious that it's a puzzle at this point but basically i'm supposed to get power to the elevator and like i said i don't i'm i'm sounding like a broken record here but i don't know if the same people that made puzzles in the resident evil games made these puzzles as well i don't know so anyway, the idea here is that there's going to be three kind of pipes that travel from the left to the right of the screen, the lower left to the upper right. And they have particular configurations, so you have to arrange them correctly. And there's also a particular order that you have to arrange them in, or a sequence that you have to bring down the pipes, otherwise it just doesn't work. So I kind of remembered from one of my previous playthroughs that I know the green pipe goes in the middle because it's the only pipe that goes straight. And the blue pipe kind of goes over while the red pipe kind of goes under the green. So that's why there's a very particular configuration. Now, for the life of me, I don't know. I don't know why these are arranged the way they are. Wouldn't it just be the most efficient thing to like just have three straight pipes? But then, but then again, this wouldn't be a puzzle. So I guess there you go. And I actually did not get a chance to comment on this yet, but in terms of the soundtrack for this game, honestly, to me, it's, it's, I hate to say it, but it's really not all that memorable. There's literally the only song that I, that always kind of sticks out to me from this soundtrack is the Save Room music, which is obviously the music I use in my intro for this Let's Play, and I like it a lot, but it. But other than that, I mean, the soundtrack does have tense moments in it. So obviously this is the correct solution because we get this cutscene. But other than that, uh, the soundtrack does its job, I guess. But it, honestly, it's like really reminiscent. It's very, how do I describe it? It's very sort of it's very reminiscent of the director's cut version of of the original resident evil soundtrack kind of like all over the place a little tough i can't think of the word though but it's very reminiscent and it's kind of funny to me because obviously resident evil 2 came out before this game and resident evil 2 has a very has a very memorable soundtrack like literally someone could say the name of a room to me and I'm like oh I know what song plays and by the way lovely is it pterodactyl or pterodon is there a difference again I'm trying to brush up on my dinosaur knowledge here but anyway nice little giblets there for your enjoyment so like I said the soundtrack is a little kind of random to me I guess is the best way for me to describe it and it's it reminds me of director's cut The blood has begun to coagulate. Well, la di da. This looks pretty bad. Listen, I'll take care of you. Okay, I thought they were gonna follow me now, but I have to go, I guess, activate the elevator and then come back and get these two individuals here. So, I think it was two pterodactyls here, and one of them, obviously, you saw what happened to him. And I'm not seeing the other one anymore. I didn't kill it. I don't have ammo to to waste on it. I think I think it's not even worth it because it they only kind of attack you in this area anyway. And obviously here you see that it's pretty much left me alone for some reason. Don't know what. But it's really interesting to me because Resident Evil 2 came out in 1998. This game came out 99, I think. And Resident Evil 2 has an incredibly memorable soundtrack. It's, in my opinion, far superior than the director's cut. And I don't really know enough about the original soundtrack to comment on it. But... So we're on our way. And I love how almost every, not every, but a lot of 
characters in these games have that same Leon Kennedy haircut like this guy. Same haircut as him, except his hair is much darker than Leon's. As I said, I'm really trying to avoid talking over the dialogue because it's it's hard enough to hear as it is. I think it's just my copy of the CD. I, I probably it probably could use a good cleaning anyway. Maybe that'll help because I have seen I have seen playthroughs of this game where the dialogue is much clearer. You can you can hear very clearly what's going on. So again, I do apologize for that. And um I'm still in the middle of recording this, by the way. You guys know how I do it. I record a little bit of head ahead, so maybe I can like clean the disc, and hopefully that'll help. Regina, we have to hurry. Tom's not going to last much longer. I'll clear a path by moving these containers. You just keep an eye on Tom. Ah, yes, and here we go. This puzzle I always mention whenever I talk about Dino Crisis, even in my other games, even in my other Let's Plays. For example, in my Code Veronica Let's Play, there is a puzzle that's a lot simpler than this, but it really reminds me of Dino Crisis. So I always mention, oh, Dino Crisis has these, has these crane puzzles you have to move uh, you have to move containers around to get to clear a path for people so this is what I mentioned earlier I think there's actually an, at least one other one coming up much later in the game so that's why it sticks out to me for some reason and I don't know if that was meant to be an intentional reference the code Veronica one to this I'm pretty sure it was and it always so it always brings back fond memories as a matter of fact this game, I remember there was one time where, I mean, obviously when it came out, so, you know, when I, when I was a kid, it came out, and my cousin and I, when I was a kid, it was like just me and my cousin would just play all these video games. As a matter of fact, he was the one that would introduce me to most of these, and then I was, you know, if I liked it, then I would buy it myself and, and play it. But I remember there were, there was, for some reason, we were playing in the living room in my grandmother's house, and all of a sudden, everybody, everybody in our family that was in in the house at the time, just kind of gathered around us as we were playing. And they were like, they got we were we were in a we were solving a particular puzzle. It hasn't happened yet, but I'll, I'll point it out when it happens. The puzzle that I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, my whole family kind of gathers around, sitting in the couch behind us. We were sitting on the floor in front of the TV, and we all got involved in trying to solve the puzzle. Like I said, the Dino Crisis puzzles are very involved. So I just remember that as being an incredibly fond memory. It was like we all gathered together and we all took part in this experience. And it was my hobby. Like it was video games. You know what I mean? And, and I was like, that is kind of awesome. I always, I mean, at the time it was definitely a lot of fun. It was kind of cool. And even now, just kind of like, wow, that was really awesome. I like, I like stuff like that. It didn't happen a lot, but that was a lot of fun. So... That'll do it. I'm sure there's multiple solutions to this puzzle, but I just did what looked intuitive to me. Will do. Concentrate on the mission. Rest easy. Right. That is an enormous gun. It looks like a sniper rifle. Okay, Rick, this guy's dying next to you and you have time to for a little for small chit chat. That's nice. All right, so let me follow him. I don't know. I don't know if there's items hidden between the crates and stuff. Don't know. So, the dead man has a memo. Oh my gosh, if I read one more DDK related file, I think I'm going to blow my brains out. I think I left a DDK at the large elevator control room when I went there yesterday to do the elevator maintenance. As for the other DDK, I think the rookie guy, Tom, who was recently assigned, has it. 
that jerk approached Kirk. Oh, that rhymes. Is this guy trying to be a rapper or something? I don't know. But anyway, that, that file is incredibly useless because we already have the DDK discs. I don't know if you can miss picking them up before coming here. Probably. As a matter of fact, yeah, because the door, it's DDKL, and I haven't reached that door yet. So I guess that's designed for people who might have missed the DDK the disc so they can know where to pick it up. Okay, I have no idea which way to go. I believe I'm supposed to be following Rick and Tom. Oh man, Rick has a gun too, so I don't know why he knocked him down. They could have both been shooting him and would have killed the dinosaur sooner. But you know, plot has to get in the way of logic. What is this room? Oh, I was here. I was just here. I didn't realize. This is one of those generator rooms, the ones with the batteries that I had to move around. I don't need to be here right now. I guess it's just for convenience. I'm not sure, but... But that's good to know that that's there, I suppose. So there's nothing to do in that room. So let me keep going. <laughs> right now, at this particular point, I said, well, let me see what's behind the other door that I saw, but I ignored for some reason. And check this out. As soon as I, as soon as I walked through the door, I realized it's exactly the same area that I was in, which makes sense. It looks like it's very obvious, but I didn't know it at the time. Is this a danger event? Yes, it is. Right. There, you know, that was kind of a letdown right there. That could have been an incredibly scary moment if instead of it cutting to a cutscene, the dinosaur would have just jumped right out. They, they could have done that, and that would have been a really, really intense moment. And, uh, you know, think about, think about the moment where the dinosaurs crash into... Uh, dinosaurs, oh my gosh, where the dogs crash into the mansion hallway in Resident Evil. And that game came out years before this one, so it's not like it's impossible. So I believe this is where Tom and Rick are. It looks like a, yeah, it looked like a medical room. Yeah, that part made absolutely no sense. It's, I could understand if Rick had no weapon on him, but he has this enormous, like, it almost looks like, the, you know, a gun that they mount on, on tanks. It's that big. Like, it's ridiculous. So I'm pretty sure he would have been able to cut down the, the dinosaur, you know, reasonably quickly. There's the ID card that I need, so finally, I can make some more progress in the game. There was that white door that you saw earlier I couldn't get through. I needed the ID card. And not only that, but now that I have the ID card, I can rewrite it and access different areas, which is great. Okay, so this just confirms the strategy room, which is that white door that I mentioned earlier. I'll show it to you once I get to it. For some reason, I thought that was a file. It looked like a file. What's interesting to me about this game is that a lot of... A lot... A lot of the things that you see, even the items you can't interact with, are so... They all look like they have the same resolution, so it's hard to tell what you can pick up or what you can read. Like in Resident Evil, you see that if there's a file to pick up, you, you can tell that it's something that you can pick up because it looks a little different than the rest of the items that you see that you can't interact with. So I just find that interesting here. I, it would be interesting to see how long Dino Crisis was in development. Both two, locked by tiny locks. Yeah, <laughs> that's my answer to your tiny locks. What the hell? I don't remember those boxes. Tiny locks, I wonder what that would be for. This is another save room. And by the way, I love how Tom has an Uzi. It looked like an Uzi. 
and Regina didn't pick it up. I would have picked it up. I mean, hey, you know. Okay, so Rick said he's going to be in the control room, which is where he has been for a little while until he went to go look for Tom. So now, just going to go check to see. So yeah, this that shutter was down before, so thankfully this is a nice convenient, you know, route to get up here when I need to. Let me see if he has any new information. Now that I'm thinking about it, the gun that he has looks like a sniper rifle. Obviously, you can't see it anymore. He has it tucked away up his ass or something. And why the hell would a guy who's in charge of, like, hacking security systems, he's like, I mean, obviously, you can tell he's, like, the resident hacker. Why would he have a sniper rifle? I mean, give him a weapon, yes, because just in case he needs to be left alone and he gets attacked, you really need him alive, so let him defend himself. But with a sniper rifle? And even if it's not, is it an assault rifle then? Well, maybe an assault. I don't, would an assault rifle be good up close? Oh my god, dinosaur. Alright. Cool. I believe this is the hallway that I needed to be in. This is, yeah, I just wanted the dinosaur to get stunned. So I don't have to worry about him for a little while. This is the room I was talking about, the door. The, red, the white door red door oh gosh that, that's the that is the name of a perfume by the way lord knows why i was thinking of that all right so lots of goodies here all right what does this file say reinforcement of id management okay so just in case it wasn't blatantly obvious that you can you can uh change rewrite an id card here it is again emphasizing it for you You know what's really interesting though, like, in my, in my job, the way people punch in and punch out, so you know, obviously when they've come into work, is we have a hand scanner, which I thought was pretty cool, I'm like, I always like sci-fi stuff, so I'm just, I'm just like, oh, okay, first a hand scanner, you just basically pay, place your hand down, like your palm, and then it reads it, and you, and you also input a code, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe pretty soon we'll have an eye scanner. And as a matter of fact, I work in a clinic, so one way we identify patients is through an iris scan. And I'm like, dude, dude, this is the future, man. I live in the future, y'all. Do you remember? <laughs> I don't know how, how old you guys are. I don't know what my demographic is, how old you guys are. If you guys are younger than 15, then this probably doesn't apply to you, what I'm going to say next. But the way back in the day, mid to late 90s, I, I, I was born in the 80s, but I grew up in the 90s. Obviously, that, that's what people would tend to do, right? And I remember when I would say, oh, man, once the year 2000 hits, we're going to get, you know, we're going to get these hover cars. We're going to get all this stuff, all the stuff you see in the silly science fiction movies. I thought the year 2000 would, as if... 2000 like this arbitrary you know designation for a year for for a particular period in time was going to automatically result in future things happening i think i'm just about done with this area for now i have what i need so i'm gonna step outside again try to juke this dinosaur once more and there you have it i, I really don't see you know, kind of in hindsight now, looking back, there's probably a few instances where I really should have saved my ammo. There's a few unavoidable battles, for sure, but, but there were a few dinosaurs that I know, kind of thinking back, I really should have just avoided using the laser, the laser fences. Now, this is the researcher that I need the fingerprint for, so now that I have the fingerprint scanning device i can use it on him and i know the code i think my data has been collected all right great one thing that i'm noticing with the menu i wish there was a back button that didn't automatically boot you back to the game that's a little annoying you see me do that a few times and it's it's kind of annoying i know in resident evil and i 
I know I keep going back and forth between the two games, but I mean, obviously, the comparisons are going to be inevitable. So, I I noticed that you know there is a back button. Like for example, if you're looking at the map here, see how I when I press the back button, like the escape button, it automatically booted me back to the game. Whereas I don't know if Resident Evil does that too, but there's definitely a back button within the menu itself. Like you don't. Like, once you select something incorrectly, you pretty much have to kind of exit and come back in this game. Alright, registration number. Now, it's 58104, right? I know that now, but apparently I have I got hit with a little bit of dyslexia. No offense, but um, I, I typed it a little backwards here. You'll see in a moment. So I need the ID card. I don't think I need the ID card in its present form anymore. I would hope not, otherwise I might be screwing myself. Yep. Whoops. So I had to go back and see, what the hell was that number? 58104. Now I don't need to read it again. I think I'm good this time. Well, I say that and... But there was also another body in the front entrance, outside of outside of the main entrance that also had an ID number so I don't know if I need to use his information maybe or maybe it's just kind of a one of those things that's there to trick you I guess a red herring all right so I have that fingerprint data all systems are go now Paul Baker yes I will there was one time where I got up to this part in the game in a previous playthrough and you see how there's those multiple steps. I thought that I had completed it before, will you rewrite the thing? And I thought I said, okay, I'm done. Whoops. And then I went to the door that I needed to go to with the what I thought was the rewritten card. And very awkwardly, it wasn't rewritten. So, of course, massive confusion ensues. And then I realized, whoops, I missed a step. So that was a little silly on my part, but thank goodness I didn't do it this time around. Or maybe I didn't, I edited it out. I don't know where I'm going now. Of course! Oh. What, no easy out in this? I have to kill him? I guess so. Oh boy. Ugh, gosh, I keep forgetting that they can leap at you like that. That's really... That's really annoying that I keep forgetting that. So I'm gonna heal because... You remember what happened to me last time? I forgot and I died. So I really don't want to do that this time around. I don't know if... He's still alive, so... Just gonna... I'm gonna wait over here. I'm gonna... What I thought I could do was I thought I could use this like table here, this 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 elevated thing here, to. Okay, I think. Uh, I think he might be dead this time, for really reals now. One more DDK file. Okay, take a shot every time I read a file that that mentions DDK. Number based key decoding, but I mean I get it because they have, because if the DDK. The DDK code, the way it works, was exactly the same throughout the game, it will be incredibly boring. So at least they try to up the challenge as you go along. But, and it makes sense gameplay wise, but I can't help but wonder if they were constantly upgrading the encryption, why didn't they just upgrade it for all the doors? It's because you saw in the beginning it was very simple unlocking some of the earlier doors, like the H door, the N door, and why they didn't just, you know, if they found a better system, just not implement it anywhere is beyond me. But it makes sense in the game, I guess. So, I'll see you guys next time.